Welcome to this edition of the Million Dollar Mastermind Podcast. This is where we pick the brains of high achievers from all walks of life and get their hard-earned, real-world insights on winning. I'm your host, Larry Wydell. You're on a treadmill, and the thing in the beginning, you don't know on the treadmill, but after a while, you know how much work it's going to take. And the thing is your salespeople know. And the other thing about no recurring income for your business is there's no recurring income for your salespeople. And, you know, they like to build up some residual income, makes them feel like they're getting ahead, you know, progressing rather than constantly being behind the eight ball, you know. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. And that was a major oversight in the kind of the overall way that I had set up the business. And I realized that last year and we made the full shift towards the end of last year and into this year. And at this point, I'm very you know, glad to say that we've shifted completely to recurring revenue. So, yeah. you know, bringing people in, spreading it out, you know, we have kind of initial usual like six month package. We'll have a certain amount. There's kind of an onboarding and then the monthly amount. And then after that, it's just the monthly. Right. Yeah. And then people can stay. We have an initial commitment of six months. Right. Because that's right down. But then from there, it's just auto renew. And then they get to decide how long they want to continue to work with us. And then we have certain things where we'll help them with YouTube ads. But then we also brought in a YouTube channel growth expert. Now I have experience with that, but I also brought in somebody who is even better than me at that has grown yeah. multi-million subscriber channels to help our clients with that and then help them with omnipresent retargeting and you know other things that will pop up that they'll want to do so that we can retain those clients longer term and continue to provide value and have it just be a part of their budget. And that has been so much better. And it's also really helped me be able to make better projections because I know going into each month, our recurring revenue covers all of our expenses. Right. Plus, it's a so great it's feeling, awesome. isn't it? It's, it's a great, it's an amazing feeling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. it, you know, it's kind of like you're living off dividend income or something like that. It's just like, yeah, life gets a little easier. Uh, and so, when things go sour, you know, the important point there is, especially with salespeople, salespeople are mercurial, you know, they're super excited or they're super depressed. I know because I live in that world and, you know, attention deficit and constantly need to be stimulated. And so when things go wrong, it can go wrong in a hurry. And sometimes you don't come back from that and things can actually get kind of nasty. What did you live through with your staff that you would not want to live through again? Oh, that's a really good question. So <laughs> I think there's a couple of different things, and I think you're really diving in because that's one thing that we saw is, is I think that there's what you realize when you face some challenges as a, overall as a company, more so than just maybe a month, but you face kind of a season of challenges, is I think you realize who are the fair weather employees and who are yeah. the ones that are really in it for the long. Right. And I think that it was really kind of tough. It's like, you know, it's similar to if somebody goes through personal challenges and they realize, okay, who are the fair weather friends? You know, the people that are all right, see you, you know, versus the people that are there for you when you need them. It's the same thing inside a business. And it's a tough kind of wake up call. It's the same thing with masterminds too, right? The certain people that are actually going to stand by you inside of a mastermind and help you when you're facing challenges versus the people that are just kind of like take insights from you when you're seeing really great successes, right? And and people that I think have been around, and I think that you really illustrate this, of course, with the wisdom that you have. And, you know, I've just kind of faced my initial set of challenges last year, but I think people that have gone through that, they know different people are different stages. You want to be there to support them. But I think it's the same thing with employees is if they're used to a certain thing, then they might decide to jump ship. So we had some people leave. Same thing with the sales team, right? I think the one thing that is was interesting to me is kind of like how things bunch together. When things go wrong, there's several things that go wrong and break. Yeah, uh, when right. things right, a lot of things go right, but you don't realize that that's multiple things compounding until you see the flip side, right? When right. multiple things go wrong. And so it's kind of like momentum works both ways. And so if you start to face those challenges, then yeah, some people, they don't get out of those challenges. They don't make the right decisions. I had to make kind of tough decisions to be able to say, okay, here's what we need to do. And so I think that also we had really grown the team beyond an efficiency point as well. And so, you know, some of the challenges that we had last year is we did have to let a couple of people go that were 
redundant in different areas and maybe right. not the caliber that we needed. And that's not to say anything about them personally. And in all these cases, you want to say, hey, how can we transition you to what's next, right? How can we support you in that? Right. But you want to make sure you've got the right people on the right seats on the bus. And then also be prepared for people to say, hey, this bus is taking a detour and I don't want to be a part of it and I'm going to leave kind of fair weather people. And I think that you're going to find who your core crew is, but there's actually a really strong power in that because coming off and also it gives me more visuals. Now, when we're hiring people, I can see and I can really ask the questions and I can, you know, kind of read between the lines and see, is this somebody who's really committed? Because right now we're on that momentum uh, track again, thankfully, you know, it's been it, we right. had a challenging year last year, but, you know, we're back on that momentum track and I'm not going to let myself bring on people. And of course, you always know, but I want to really look for the people that are going to be in it for the long haul and are really looking to be a part of something through the ups and the downs and the challenges and everything. What's your strategy on making that happen? In other words, you know, you'll evolve and you'll develop that as you go with, but at this point, what have you learned about putting the odds of success in your favor with a new person, you know, it's good for them, good for you, you know, because you know what they're getting into. They don't know what they're getting into. And so the more you can get the right person involved and get them off to the right start and all, the better. So what have you learned about that? Yeah, I think the big thing that I've learned is that a culture fit is so important and not to make exceptions. So I think that one of the things that we had done in the past is when we were really enamored by somebody's skills and background and what they brought, and we did this a lot on the sales team, but also in other areas too, one of the mistakes that we had made was making exceptions or uh, somebody was good enough. Now, and I remember turning to you, and by the way, in this realm, uh, Julia, my COO, she's been with me even since the college days, we really built things up together, but she's fantastic at this side of things. And she's grown a lot. I've grown a lot in certain ways too. And we kind of pair this together and I like to kind of have a final interview, but she has a lot more of the process overall with new team members. But one of the big things that we really want to ask and figure out is figure out like, what are their core values? Or are they aligned with our core values? Are they potential culture fit? And also, what are they looking to do? What are their goals, right? And are they aligned with what we're looking to do and what the role entails? And I think one big thing that we figured out was really with the sales team. We used to make an exception and say, oh, well, sales team members, they're just different types of people. Right. You know, not going to fit our core values. And that really did bite us later on when those were the people that said, oh, hey, we're, I'm not, you know, I'm used to making thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, you know, commission checks. And if you're facing a little bit of challenges, I'm going to be like, peace out, see you later. And, you know, instead of being that person that could bring you back up to that area, and we had, you know, some ego challenges and things like that. And so we needed to figure out how do we bring people on? And also, what's our, like our core values should be embodied in every single part of the business. There's some people out there that they tout, oh, your sales team, they're separate. They're always going to be a little bit like not fit your core values. And people, some people talk about that. Some consultants talk about that. I now wholeheartedly disagree with that. I think every team member, you know, needs to really align with your core values. And it might be a little bit harder on the front end to find that person or find the person that aligns the core values, but maybe you need to train them more in the skill of sales. But when you do, that's the person that's there for the long haul. And I can think of, you know, my couple top advisors right now, they're the people that are perfect culture fits, advisor, what we, you know, call it, because it, yeah. it's called a sales. It's like, they're, they're hopping on, they're seeing the business, helping map out the solution for YouTube ads. But a couple of top advisors that we have now are people that have been with us for a while. They're also people that fit and align with our core values. And they really care about our clients first. They're, we had yeah. people in the past that cared more about making the sale. And what we had to do is make parameters like, all right, don't do this, don't do that. Yeah. With these people, we don't have to make all those parameters because they just know. They're going to do what's right for the client, which is really, really important. Well, you have to always think and check the background of whoever's giving you advice. It sounds a little odd. And it could be the person and comes from an industry where they have a very rapid turnover in salespeople. It's just like, you know, who cares what they believe? You know, they're going to be here month, six weeks to, you know, 90 days. Who cares? But most of it, you know, that's a very trauma 
traumatic way to live, <laughs> you yeah. know, where you're having, having to replace your sales force that regularly. And yeah, you might give a thought to why you're losing them that fast. But the bottom line, you know, one thing that's a fundamental truth is everything is connected. Every person is connected. Everybody's connected. And so <laughs> to stay together long term, you've got to have a mix on the uh, alignment. And it goes into a lot of areas. It's not, you know, it's your job to ask those questions or find out that information one way or the other if you can spot a problem. And uh, I can give examples and you can give examples, but let it just be said, you know, the deal is it's your company and you're going to be you. And so if they've got really radical views than you in other areas and everything, chances are that's going to turn into a conflict somewhere down the road. If you can avoid that by getting somebody else in, so much the better. And so as you've gone through, how do you keep your sales force motivated? Yeah. That's a great question. And I think it's really just evolved over time, which is really great. I really, the sales team that we have now, they really match and embody our core values that we have. And our core values are lead with passion and excellence, empower successful clients, act with integrity and dream and grow together. And there's some more, you know, kind of details on yeah. each of those. That's kind of the high level. And one of the big, you know, core values is empower successful clients, really focus on that. And we really believe in the alignment of success with our clients, team, and business, right? So if our team is now motivated, and this didn't used to be the case, so this is what it is now, they're motivated by that alignment triangle. Essentially, when we help our clients succeed and we advise them and we help them, that's not helping them do what they think that they may want, which might be not invest if they really should. We want to, again, and similar to a mastermind, we want to help them make the best decision for their business and give them an, and say, hey, you're not a fit or you are a fit and I would recommend this and then help them, you know, go to that side of things. So it's still a sales role. But what we want to do is we want to help them be successful, aligning the success of our clients with the success of our business and the success of the team member, in this case, the sales uh, person who is then, of course, you know, they're earning a commission, but they're also growing and they're expanding in their role. And so I think by having people that fit our core values, that care about seeing our clients succeed, that are in it for the long haul, that want to really grow at outreach, also seeing that there's paths. So we have people that were used to be salespeople that now are in other positions within the company because they wanted to dive into client success and support our clients, or they wanted to dive into another area inside of the business or ascend in that. And so I think having the ability for people to grow, uh, we have appointment setters and specialists that are fantastic. We actually had one of them go, and we've had multiple in the past, but recently, you know, one become a core advisor, core salesperson. So seeing that progression, seeing the alignment of success between our clients, business, and themselves, all of that helps to motivate the sales team. Thanks for listening to the Million Dollar Mastermind. If you felt there were any valuable takeaways from this episode, please take a minute and leave us a five-star review. Your feedback is important and really helps us get the word out to a wider audience. Remember, we have a valuable webinar that is absolutely free. Register for it right now at whiteallenwinning.com. Thanks for listening.